Hello, my friends. I'm John Laspina, your carnivore teacher alpha. Seed oils are everywhere. In restaurants, in packaged food, in heart healthy spreads, in salad dressings, in your kitchen cabinet without you even realizing it. But here's the truth. Human beings never consumed seed oils at any point in human history until about 120 years ago. No tribe, no ancient civilization, no traditional culture. Because before the late 1800s, seed oils did not exist in any edible form. They were industrial products. They were lubricants, machine oil, lamp fuel. Today, I'm going to walk you through exactly how seed oils are made step by step and why the process is so unnatural, so extreme, and so chemically aggressive that there is no possible way our biology was ever meant to consume this. Let's begin. Section one, what are seed oils? Seed oils include canola oil, soybean oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, grapeseed oil, rice bran oil, peanut oil, Crisco. These oils do not exist naturally in the way olive oil or animal fats do. You cannot squeeze a soybean and get oil. <laughs> you cannot press a kernel of corn and get oil. You cannot crush a cotton seed and get anything remotely edible. These oils require industrial extraction, machines, solvents, deodorizers, bleach, heat, pressure, and chemical refinement. Before factories, this was impossible. Therefore, humans never ate these fats until recently. Section two, step by step how seed oils are manufactured. This is the part almost no one knows. It is a long, violent, chemical heavy industrial process. Let's walk through it. Step one, collection and cleaning. Seeds from corn, soybeans, cotton, rapeseed, or other plants are collected. They are dusty, pesticide coated, sprayed with herbicides, exposed to mold, fungal toxins, and oxidation. They must be cleaned to remove debris, soil, husks, and contaminants, but cleaning does not remove pesticides. Those remain in the oil. Two, crushing and rolling. The seeds are crushed and rolled at high speed to break them open, and this process releases fragile polyunsaturated fats exposes them to oxygen, begins oxidation immediately, and generates heat. Already, before any oil is even collected, the fats are losing stability. All right, step three, heating the seeds. The crushed seeds are then heated to over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 93 degrees Celsius. This is where the first major damage happens. Heating polyunsaturated fat oxidizes them, creates free radicals, forms toxic aldehydes like 4-HNE and MDA, breaks down omega-3 and omega-6 bonds, and produces rancid compounds. But factories must heat them, otherwise no oil comes out. Step four, chemical extraction using hexane. This is the step nobody would ever guess is involved in vegetable oil. To actually get the oil out of the seed pulp, manufacturers use hexane, a petroleum-derived solvent. Hexane dissolves the oil from the seed meal. The mixture is heated, boiled, evaporated, separated. While most hexane is removed, trace amounts remain in the final product. Regulators allow this. All right, step five, high heat distillation. Next, the oil is heated again, extremely high, to burn off remaining solvents. Temperatures often exceed 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 204 degrees Celsius. At this stage, the fragile polyunsaturated fats absolutely are fully oxidized, chemically unstable, structurally altered, filled with reactive breakdown products. The oil is now dark, foul-smelling, and inedible. 
factories admit, you would never willingly consume oil in this state. So, step six, degumming. Phospholipids and plant gums must be removed with phosphoric acid and citric acid. This strips the oil of remaining valuable nutrients, if any were even left. Step seven is bleaching. The oil is then passed through bleaching clay to remove the dark color, rancid compounds, and oxidized pigments. Bleaching does not remove oxidation, though. It only hides it. Step eight is deodorizing. This stuff reeks at this point. It's, it stinks. It smells like industrial waste. So factories use steam deodorization at extremely high heat. There's that heat again. And this step destroys free fatty acids, creates trans fats, forms more aldehydes, rearranges the molecular structure, and many seed oils legally contain up to 4% trans fat, even when the label says zero grams of trans fat. We're not done yet. <laughs> step nine adding preservatives. Because the oil is already highly unstable, they add chemical preservatives such as TBHQ, BHA, and BHT. These slow oxidation, but do not stop it. All right, section three, the final product. After crushing and heating and solvent extraction and acid treatment and bleaching and deodorizing and high heat processing and chemical stabilization, you now have seed oil, an industrial product never consumed by any human before 1900. Not a traditional fat, not a whole food, not something our ancestors ever ate, not aligned with human biology. These oils oxidize on the shelf, in your pan, in your bloodstream, in your cell membranes. They create inflammation, oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, and metabolic disease. And humans were never meant to ingest this. Section four, humans never ate seed oils until the Industrial Revolution. Before factories, nobody extracted soy oil or cottonseed oil or corn oil. These seeds were impossible to process by hand. Cottonseed oil, in particular, was originally used as lamp fuel, machine lubricant, soap base, industrial waste product. Only after hydrogenation in the early 1900s did it get repackaged as Crisco, the first mass market seed oil disguised as food. From that moment forward, obesity rose. Diabetes rose, heart disease rose, cancer rates rose. These charts match seed oil consumption almost perfectly. Seed oils are not food. They are a chemical experiment. Here's the takeaway, section five. Seed oils are not natural food. They are industrial products extracted with heat, solvents, acids, and chemical refineries. Humans evolved eating ruminant fat tallow, butter, eggs, suet, bone marrow, seafood fats, animal organs, not chemically extracted crop residue. Seed oils are the biggest dietary mistake in human history, and removing them is one of the most powerful steps you can take toward better health. If this breakdown opened your eyes to how seed oils are really made, hit the thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell icon and share this with someone who still thinks these oils are heart healthy because they're not. I post a daily teaching video every day. We are on Carnivore Sunday School, which is not a religious show. It is just on Sunday and I was a teacher, so we call it School Sunday School with George Goodenough and Stephanie Taylor and a special guest every week. And you can type in your questions and comments and participate and be part of the community, and I hope to see you there. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and eliminate seed oils completely. Take it completely out of your diet, and you'll notice a great improvement in your health. Take care.